Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. But no matter what, happy Friday. Welcome to Beyond the Sim. I'm Sean Cole with my good buddy, Billy Strange. How are you doing on this Friday morning, Billy? I'm good. Yeah. I'm awake. You're awake. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been an interesting week. I haven't gotten a lot accomplished as far as uh, sim racing goes. Did you say interesting week? Yes. Interesting is one of those words. Interesting rarely means something good. I mean, every it, once in a while, someone's teasing you, you know, but really interesting rarely means... So. It's indifferent. It's <laughs> a lot of small little things have gone on this week that are just just interesting. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, I hear you guys have been having an extreme heat wave up there. Is that true? Yeah, yesterday was like 108. Oh, that is so brutal. So but I'm in my house. So I say keep going. Yeah, so if you have good AC and it's 108, does that leave you with nothing but sim racing to do? <laughs> uh, you would – well, yesterday, yes. Before that, no. I was running around doing all kinds of stuff. Tuesday was the birthday, so then, you know. That's right. Between everything else, then people want to take you out to lunch or go to dinner. Uh, Monday, I usually reserve for editing – the podcast mm -hmm. so i don't usually on mondays i don't usually get a lot of sim time mm -hmm. uh wednesday i was having a bunch of construction work done on the house so that didn't yeah can't really do anything with people here all all i can sit there and do is you know when i'm not working is stare at the people doing work on my house instead <laughs> right <laughs> So did you get anything good for your birthday? I, well, earlier this month, my wife got me the Samsung smartwatch. Oh, the, the gear, Samsung gear watch? Yeah. I have a smart, I love I my, smart. dude, I've become. I really like it. <laughs> yeah. I so really. You're a Samsung phone guy then, I'm assuming, because. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they, they really go well. That's I have the Garmin, which I don't think is as fun as the Samsung watch in terms of integration with the phone. Uh, oh, yeah. I have, I have um, for when I was going backpacking, for when I do go backpacking, I have the, there's a Sunto. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you say it. I have one of their watches. That's the GPS and all that. But now this thing kind of takes over you know we are on a side story so i love watches but you know watches just kind of went out of fashion so i have all these watches with dead batteries that i don't wear because watches anyway so when i bought this i was actually a little concerned that i was wasting money like that i don't need it i don't want it and then now i'm so in love with it that i actually want to go get other brands to just kind of have the different <laughs> options that they all have. I really love it. And like this thing monitors my sleep, my heart rate, you know, everything. And it's like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah. So. You know, actually it's got me better about what I eat. So and for the last yours two, knows what you're three eating. weeks. Thank God mine doesn't know what I eat. <laughs> oh yeah. Three, well, listen. I mean, I have to, yeah, right. I have to put it in, but for the last three weeks, I've actually paid attention to what I've been eating. <laughs> <laughs> to what I've been eating about. I eat way too much. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Theodore, my time pieces. Um, <laughs> uh, he says a watch works on spring. So so have you done much racing in amongst all the things going on? Um, I did. Last night, I got to try the new tire model for ACC. Um, I like it. At first, I was trying the standard setup, mm -hmm. and I hated it. Mm -hmm. Most sims, in my experience, most sims have a hard time translating when, what the edge of traction is, lateral traction is, mm -hmm. in the back end, versus that moment where it breaks free. Okay. There's usually, in my experience, with racing is there's a little more graduation like you can kind of tell like there's a hint of a slip point. before there's a loss yeah so most sims seem to just be stuck and gone so i kind of equate it to like when i was racing slot cars a rubber tire versus a silicone tire a silicone tire is either stuck or the the car just comes out of the slot 
And to me, that's how a, sim, a lot, not all, but a lot of sims work is they're either stuck or the hint of the car starting to get sideways, then they're kind of gone. Right. Where um, in the real world, it's more like the rubber tire with a slot car. There's a little bit of give and then the car takes off. There's just, there's just, I don't, I know what you know. <coughs> I you know what I mean. Yes. But it's yes. hard to convey what I'm trying to get across yes. is that there's a, there's that hint of, I can feel the car has stepped over the edge, but we're not completely. <coughs> I out think to that's look. something that we lose, and, and maybe this is a topic we'll cover today, but I think that's where we don't have that seat of the pants because that first indication isn't right. visual. It's not even in the steering wheel yet sometimes. It's, it's, in your ass, you know, um, and, and yeah, are up your and you spine. You kind of have to anticipate it. Yes, yes. You, you like you know, as a driver, I think this is what gets confusing for some people because they <laughs> say that the the force feedback is what informs them of when you know the car is breaking free and all this kind of stuff. And my argument to that would be, as a driver, you know when you've made a mis- you've made a mistake. And that's coming next. Right. So you're already anticipating catching the slide, not waiting for the car to tell yep. you. Yep. That, uh, okay, and- now counter. And it's a really hard thing to explain to people that haven't raced an actual car before because right. you're you're trying to anticipate constantly what what you're doing. And you don't always know it on the first lap. So you know your car really well. Like when you're racing, you know, to the point that you're like, hey, I'm a race. You know your car. You've driven it at a handful of different tracks and, you know, a handful of different practice days, even non-racing. And it's like you're starting to really understand the behavior of your car at all these different situations, you know, different RPM ranges, different uh, level of wheel input, different level of how much you've thrown the car around. So Mm -hmm. when you get to a new track, you kind of know because you know your car, but it's like it's that third lap where you're like, hey, the first two times around, I got a little bit loose. So you're waiting in anticipation of that loose moment versus the corners where you know the car is always planted perfectly, you know, and you don't really have to anticipate it. Max, come on, buddy. Give it a rest. You've been horrendous today. Don't make me get out the (laughs) squirt bottle. (laughs) I'll try the squirt bottle. (laughs) Oh, so overall, what did you think of the tire model and driving a CC like that? So I started with the standard model, and it was kind of doing the same thing that I didn't. It's By, really oh, sorry, sorry, me. sorry, Billy. Tom Jones, thank you very much. I don't want to let that go. And oh. I, know, I know our little spinny thing happened and all that good stuff, but thank you, Tom Jones. All right, uh, continue. Please, sorry, sorry, Billy. Worst host in the world. So. <laughs> So to kind of get back to ACC, when I first drove it, version 1.0, I really, really liked the way the cars handled. They made sense to me, man. You could really, I felt, push the car and it had that give to the tire where it would, where you're anticipating, right? You're on the edge. You know, you've driven it in just a little too hard. So you're just waiting for that slight hint in the monitor or in the force feedback to tell you. And then you're, and then you're already on top of it. Right. So I, I felt like I could really push it hard. Then when I tried it a couple of weeks ago, when that beta came out before, oh, <laughs> there we go, Michael Clark. Thank you. Michael Clark. Thank you. Max, you get a bone. That'll shut you up. A there bully you stick. I should run and get one. During the intermission, I'll get him a bully stick. Ah. All right. So a couple of weeks ago, when the beta came out, I was not using the beta. I was using the existing tire model to give myself a baseline for when the beta right came into full release when the new tire model actually came to full release and there was something about the car where i did not care for it it was doing that same thing where it would it'd be stuck and then gone and i'm like i feel like i have to underdrive it like i do i racing like i do not care for the way this feels anymore so with this tire model it's kind of a mix of both it's not as, in my opinion, it is not as good as when it came out in version 1.0. Mm-hmm. But it handles the curbs way better, mm-hmm. much better than version 1.0. Right. But I tried, so to get to the standard uh, setup, the standard setup, it, the traction control is what I assume was causing that stuck and gone feeling because when I went to the advanced setup, the traction control was much less mm-hmm. and I had a better understanding. Now, with that said, 
I still don't feel like I could push it as hard as I did in version 1.0. It still has a little bit of that stuck and gone, but you, you have to get a lot further than the standard set of Joe. Thank you. Keep the wheels turning. <laughs> so I like it much better uh, than the prior update, like with 1.06. Um, I do not like it as much as I did 1.0, though. Okay. It, uh, still, I still feel like I have to underdrive the car a little bit to get the most out of it. Right. Which a GT3 car, you should be able to really push the car hard. Um, and I'm not getting that from it. So. Okay. So, so in, in, and I just want your thoughts in, on this. So, in some cases, when a company, whoever it is, makes a new tire model, okay, that's a big deal to the sim because it's our first mm -hmm. relationship with the road, right? Um, there have been some that it was like they went two steps backward with their, you know, uh, their update, and everyone's just like, oh, bloody hell. And then right. there are times where they like maybe took one step backward, but you're like, but you know what? Now all they have to do is work with this and they'll actually take two steps forward and we will have made that gain, so to speak. Um, do you think they're in the right direction? It's just going to take some feedback and some input and some massaging? I am just curious. Fudging? Why it, <laughs> yeah, right? I'm just curious why it changed from the original whatever. I don't even know that it was the tire. But maybe it was something to do with the arrow or something like that. But the original way the car, the cars felt, I wonder why that that went away. Because at first I thought it was just me. Like, man, I am really out of sync. But then I we had mentioned it on the show, and I had a bunch of people write, no, there is something different with you know with it since mm -hmm. 1.0 released. Right. So I'm like, okay. So why did we why did we mess with that? Is it just because community feedback and you have people looking for a certain feeling like they're getting? Because to me, it wasn't the same as iRacing, but I, I drove it like iRacing mm -hmm. all of a sudden. Where okay. iRacing, for, for me, there is a uh, the road course cars. Let me be clear. The road course stuff, I have a very hard time understanding what those cars do. I just... They... They do not feel like they're in the track to me. They feel like they're on top of the track, kind of just moving across the screen. It's it's a very right. odd feeling for me. So I always have to, to get any decent lap time for myself out of it, I always kind of just have to back myself up and drive what I would consider, you know, about 95%. Right. And that's I, kind of how I was driving ACC before this update. I think that's one of the things that makes switching sims hard is that by default you're kind of only going to be able to max out at like 90 95 percent until you get to that point where you're predicting everything the sim is going to actually do in advance of doing it um but okay well that's interesting that that's yeah, cool i think this is a better step you know this is a step in a positive direction i think that the work that they did to stop that curb issue that they had is really good because man i tried it on zolder and zolder has the aggressive chicane right after the first couple you know yeah. couple corners yeah uh, and i can smash those curbs like they do when they're actually running the gt3 cars now and not have it just completely come unglued and then like you run a tire over the curb and it used to like stick to it and you're like uh uh, and then it just kind of pulls you off in the grass now right. you can get on top and you can kind of pull it back down so it is an improvement like right. it's a market improvement in that regard um the car does handle better i just like i said i I'm curious why there was, and if you look in all the release notes, there's no changes listed, but as you and I both know, they'll, they'll make changes and just not tell people. Sure. Sure. So I think they always do. It's just a matter of not, what they and feel not like they them. as an ACC, just developers in general. They, <laughs> they yes. all the way to Fortnite. <laughs> I mean, so, they being all of them, every single one of them that has the ability to do an update. So, um, that's just the curious thing to me is is why because i really really like the ways the, the way the cars perform minus the curbs mm -hmm. in the 1.0 release yeah um, i thought that it actually did the best at giving you that driving driving the car hard feeling and now i you know you know what i'm saying like oh, yeah. i feel like i just have to back myself up so where i can't really charge as much 
yeah. as much as I think I would be able to. I, I totally understand that. Yeah, so I did that. Uh, I got to. I just released a video, uh, another video on GTR2. I tell you what, if you want something, I don't know if you did the license test in the original Gran Turismo. Uh, way back when. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. On the PlayStation. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you ever tried to get gold on all of them. That's pretty much my motto when it comes to trophy challenges. Like, I'm okay. I it bubbles my skin to see a silver or bronze trophy. I'm the same way. So, the original Gran Turismo had a challenge of it was one of the skylines, I believe. And you were at, I think it was Deep Forest or something like that. And it was so incredibly difficult. It was like an international B or something like that, C something. And it was so, so difficult, notorious for being just brutally hard. You had to hit it perfect. Right. So this challenge in GTR 2 at Estoril, Estoril, I don't know how to say it, um, was just as brutal. Oh, my. I could not believe how hard this is. <laughs> and, and so I've been doing these challenges, right? I get to this one, and I spend hours doing this and like the very last one i like cut a bunch out because it was just me like stone cold like i'm concentrating so hard i'm like not saying anything yeah so yeah i finally make i finally beat it i finally figure out i get it done i'm all pumped up and then at the very end i notice something that i haven't noticed before and there's a garage setting you could change the setup in the garage, the car, in the garage. <laughs> i had no idea i thought you were supposed to just run them with the setup that that came with the car. Right. That's all. Really. I could have changed the setup. Just like that. Damn it. Anyway, uh, what I do want to talk about real quick, really quick, is the, uh, the, the reason I believe I had such a problem, because it does sectors. It's great because it breaks each track down into sectors. And then there's, then you do a full lap with the driving line on and then a full lap with the driving line off. And so this is the dangers of ha using a driving line to learn a track. Uh-huh. Because I believe if I had started with the, the lap without the driving line first and then went back and done all the other ones, I would have had a much easier time because I would have had to figure out where my braking points and turn in and all this. The problem is... The driving line is not for the setup that your car has. Right, right. It's a generic driving line. It's a generic driving line. And, you know, when you learn something like this, it Estoril's got really, really, it's a really tight track. It's got really tight corners, and it's got a lot of them. So it wants you to take this way sweeping late apex to get <laughs> this huge run, straighten out the end of the corner so that you get this huge run onto the straightaway. Great. You can't keep up with the stupid uh, ghost car, though, right. trying to do it. It doesn't work. What you needed to do was do it like a motocross. And slam go it in, into the dive corner. in the corner and then shoot out because the car won't hold the line when you start to feed it throttle. Right. It shoves the nose right off the track. Right. So the only way to get around that is to go in shallow, dime in the corner, and then shoot out off the bottom again. And... When you're trying to figure out how to do that, you're trying to undo all the lessons that it's told you along the way in doing those challenges. Right. And so, you're thinking they're like showing the perfect education of how to drive the sim. Right. And it's it's not at all. So the the again, the dangers of using a driving line to learn a track is it teaches you to me, it's always taught me to underdrive the car instead of find my own braking points. Mm -hmm. it, and in this case, it could taught me almost the completely wrong line for the car that I was driving. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I did that. Uh, did a couple other GTR related things two related things and then last sunday i did the live stream which was a lot of fun so if you happen to be in the live stream last sunday thank you very much for hanging out uh probably do that once a month awesome 
yeah, it was it was a good time. So, oh, that's great. That's all I did. What what did you do? Um, I've had a very interesting week. Um, I'm going to pull this up. So interesting. I've I've had a very interesting week, Billy. Um, I Friday night we did the truck race, which was just a blast. Uh, still hoping for a bigger crowd. We're running again tonight at 5:30. By the way, 5:30 tonight. Go to iRacing Hosted, look for Sim Pit Truck Series, hosted by Sean Cole. 5.30, uh, we work on the track, 6 o'clock, you know, practice, and then 6 o'clock is when we start the races. Um, had a blast. I mean, the Pro 4 trucks are just, I mean, everyone has to learn a little bit to just take a little, because you're going to get hit, you know, and some, you know, I don't think it's ever with that bad of intention as much as it's just really hard run on dirt two three wide without someone getting hit uh, oh, yeah. or put on the roof for that matter in the case of the pro four <laughs> trucks um so uh but it was so much fun i mean just i was giggling i was laughing it was a blast and uh hey cj just subscribe thank you very much um so that was friday saturday i didn't get to do anything at all because i was working on the chodas all right, that's ah uh, yes. How'd that go? Did you get anything accomplished? Um, we, yeah, you know that's what? Not I, sounding positive. It was an interesting weekend. Um, mm. yeah, we have a lot of work to do, and only two weekends to go. So we're like, we'll see if we make the race. It would be really sucky, but we'll see if we make the race at this point. Um, the whole rear end of the car is off. The engine had come out and went back in. Uh, new oil pan because we had some baffling issues. Uh, the exhaust is all torn up from the last race, and we have to meet the 90 decibel rule for Laguna. 90 decibels is like... Yes. If I were to yell right now, that would exceed 90 decibels. When our carts <laughs> run there, we have to be very careful. We actually have to run an intake box because just the intake noise busts the... Uh... And, but's the sound and, limit there because they, they only have so many so many days that they can not have yeah. a sound limit at that track and so they use them for all the like this weekend the rolex or the um uh the oh, the historic Historics yeah or this weekend or the, they use the, them on any major uh, any major event but any reunion. like club level event right. 90 decibels and they measure right at the top of the hill and that's where everything's like grunting and groaning and yeah. getting to the top of the hill. And boy, they they pop, they pop a lot of people. So yeah, I was working on that all week, and that actually I'm gonna uh, bring down my thumbnail here. Why is that up? Um, so here is, uh, in case you haven't seen it, I'm showing us some pictures of the the Chodas. There's a good shot of it, except the wheel. There there's changes that have been made, so it basically looks like this thing here. Um, the reason I'm talking about the Chotis beyond working on it and not being able to do anything this weekend, I mean, literally, I was there from, you know, uh, dawn to dusk, um, is that Chris had this car, it was, I don't think it was scanned, but they gave a million reference photos to a known to be named later mod, or not named later, uh, uh, to be kept secret modder, um, built the mm -hmm. car for them in a set of Corso. So there is this absolutely perfect, very private, I can't share it, but I have it, um, version of the car that two of the three drivers I've talked to on the team say it handles, you know, it's a sim, it's not the car, mm -hmm. but its behavior is identical to the to the Chotus. So the way it dips, the way it rolls, the braking okay. points, the on throttle points, they're like all those critical things are really, really close. Man. Chris says it's gotten a little bit looser. <laughs> Tom Jones saw it. Yep. I let everybody, I closed the thing and they saw my Care Bear picture. Um, so anyway, what I was able to do on what, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was drive the car. So I wasn't worried about lap times as much as trying to learn the behavior of the car. Uh, trying to do some heel toe. So I turned my gate gated shifter. I put a, a shield, a guard and turned it into a four speed. And it's like, okay, here's the car. All I understand right. that for the most car point, that thing will grunt its way out of any corner in third. So it's almost like a three, four car once you get it going. Okay. Um, you screw a corner up, 
Maybe you'll need to drop a second. Might have to drop a second. But for the most part, three, four. And so I was just I was just driving it and and had a blast. Um, had a really good time doing it. It's a fun car to drive. Laguna Seca, as many miles of, as I have, I still find it fun to drive at Laguna. So I don't really get bored. Anyway, I did do a show on Twitter, uh, Twitch, <laughs> um, a couple of days ago where you did get to see me get that. It was, I mean, it was one of my nonstop streams. So we did a million things, but um, that did get on air a little bit. So yeah, I did that. And then last night, I wanted to run in the um, SRS race, the Sim Pit Pro Sim Racing srs race in the in the mclaren uh gtr and admittedly i didn't do any practice admittedly i didn't put much prep because i was running late on other things but i i will say that i was at my rig at four o'clock and i'm like okay that gives me two hours till race time you know um and then i had to like rehack my srs account because it wasn't installed on my computer I had to get it on that computer. I had to, and then when I got into a seto, for the life of me, I couldn't get it to stop acknowledging my H pattern shifter. And so I spent over an hour unmapping it, redoing things, redoing all my controls over and over and over, going, what? It's not even mapped. How is the game insisting that I use it if it's not even mapped anymore? You know, there's a radio checkbox for use separate shifter in a seto. Had that thing on, off, on, off. All, anyway, it was like 10 minutes before race time, maybe 15, and I got it running in automatic. <laughs> and I was like, I can't race. You know, it's like I didn't get my stream ready. I got nothing ready. I was going to get like five minutes of track time in an automatic to see what I could do. And it was just like, oh, I can't believe it. So anyway, I missed the race that I wanted to start my season. But I know I'm missing another race later in the season anyway so i'm kind of a non-contender but i did want to run that last night but i didn't get a chance to and that really takes us to today been doing a lot of live streaming on twitch uh every morning i've been streaming all the way till lunchtime just kind of yesterday we were editing believe it or not um oh and saturday how did i leave this out and this is a video no. that'll be out later um on saturday i went down to cxc simulations oh yes four and I drove the Radical Full Motion Simulator, which was really awesome. Um, I was watching the footage, too, and, you know, it's not the fastest moving simulator in the world because it's a full car. So that movement okay. is a lot of distance to move compared to— make to, you feel something, yeah. Yeah, okay. and and so it—but it, it because you're in VR— and a lot of the VRs are offset to compensate for motion, you know. Um, since you're in the VR and you're so perfectly in tune, it's like I never I, – I would not have guessed that it looked like it felt so much faster in the car. But then the other thing is I'm looking at the footage and the nose dives like this much. And it's like, whoa, I had no idea it moved that much. Um hmm. You know, it's just, it's just, but you're sitting in the middle of it. So what you're feeling in the middle is a lot different than what you're seeing when you're looking at the corners. You know, the corners right. are doing this, but in the middle, it's only doing this, if you think about it. Um, so, but anyway, it was the best one-to-one -one simulator I've ever done. You know, because you climb in over the rail, you bolt yourself in, you put on the VR and it, all of a sudden, the dash that was literally right there down to the buttons and everything appear in your mask, you sure. know? And even though you don't need to interact with it, it also means that when you pull your mask off, the immersion still isn't broken. Whereas in VR, that moment is is kind of a big deal, actually, okay. um, to me. Uh, so it was just – it was – it was like, man, that's cool. Because if you know the Radical, the Radical has those vents over the the wheel wells, but you can actually see the tire through the wheel well vents. So when you're sitting in the car, you can see the tire through the vents. Mm -hmm. When oh, you okay, watch yeah. onboard footage, Car Heroes! Thank you very much, buddy. Oh, thank you. Um, you can see the tire spinning. So again, even that part is there because you pull it off and you're like, oh, that's exactly where I saw the tire. Um, really, really fun, Sim. 
and and they have so to, I haven't seen it yet. Educate me on where are the pickup points for the actuators on the chassis itself. They're just lifting the whole chassis in the air. So, so but what I'm saying is, it, is it at the tires? Is it at? Is it just it, at the it, square it, center of the car? Is it at the? It's just where? slightly inboard of the axles. Okay. So it's a little bit to the uh, to the inside, um, which is I think how they're allowed to get as much movement. Um, you know, because it's like the actuator would almost have to stick through the, the car so low profile. It's like <laughs> you do, the the actuator would stick through it if you try to do that at the front. Um, and get the same amount of travel that they're mm -hmm. doing. Um, but yeah, it's they're just slightly inboard. They're almost where you'd put jack stands, you know, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, okay. just slightly inside of the axles. If you, you know, if you had a perfect car, just you could put stands anywhere. I'd be just inside of the axles to the inside of the tires, obviously, so you don't see them. Um, nice. Yeah. Which on the Radical is a pretty big spread, too. Um because yeah it's it's yes so anyways it was a a, a real and then the other th a couple other things they did and i said all this in my piece so everybody watching today's show is getting a little teaser but so they have these two fans and a fan that big isn't that ridiculous but when the fan housing is that deep you know you're dealing with not a normal fan <laughs> you know because i have a window fan that's this big that's not a big deal but again right. it's this thick front to back uh big old ducted thing well these are uh the same type of fan that hollywood uses when they're doing storms on a movie studio yes. set yeah i'm familiar that. with those yeah and they are they're talk about direct drive they're basically like direct drive fan because the in the, they can stop as fast as they start you know and so i built probably four different wind simulator versions working at CXE for certain clients who wanted ducted fans, you know, working off like an Arduino board, right? And mm -hmm. they always work cool on acceleration, except for it feels like someone putting a hairdryer on you minus the heat, you know? You can feel how directional it is. Um, but then when you hit the brakes... It's still it's still spinning, right. okay. yeah, and it's it's really to me it's like it almost makes it a useless item because it isn't timed with the game now. Anyway, these fans blew, so it felt like you know how in GPL days they'd put a cloth over their head face. Yes, I almost felt like I needed a cloth over my face because this thing was so blowing <laughs> yeah but it was doing it so well because it was like you're in the radical and you're going and at 40 it's not a big deal 50 60 not a big deal you get up 90 100 and that you're feeling it coming across the the cars aerodynamics up over that lip and into your face and you're wearing a vr mask so your eyes aren't bothered at all and thank god because i was overheating in general so this gave me the cooling that i needed to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, but the most beautiful thing was when you hit the brakes, it went away as fast as the car was slowing down. Wow. And it was like, dude, that's real. And they had two of them. So this was significant. And, and that was the big difference also. The air was all around me, which feels like in a real car, you know, when you're in an open wheeler, because you're not having air blown on your face. You are hitting the wall of air with the car, and you know right. what I mean, and and it feels different. So yeah, it was it was really cool. I had a great time. They had the the valve index, which in its specs for how much they're charging, I wasn't that intrigued when it came out. After driving the valve index. I was like, oh, I have to save up money. It's a really good VR headset. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, like it. it's it's a really good VR headset. I was very impressed. Much more impressed nice. than I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to be like, oh, whatever, cool. Yeah, for the amount of money, forget it. I'm not paying that. But How much is it? I think they're like 1000 or $1,200 without a controller. <laughs> and then I think the controllers are like four or $600. Um, so anyway, I... Uh, Ah, that was that was my week. Cool. Um, and that takes us today. And then tonight again, we have the truck racing five thirty on iRacing, racing Pro Four trucks and pit truck racing something like that is the description. Uh, I sent out an email to everybody who's been involved in it so far. So, 
Um, hopefully we'll get a good crowd, and I'm looking forward to the racing regardless. We get enough people and it's fun. It's just a matter how many main races do we, you know, how competitive does the field sure. get? So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Anyway, um, should we get to some news? I think there's a, a little bit of news out there in the world. We got a, we got a little bit here. Um, Again, thanks to uh, everybody hanging out in the chat. Thanks for hanging out with us. Oh, what are we starting with? Um... Oh, we're starting with this. We're 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 starting with Sean doesn't know his modern car bodies as well as he thought he does. <laughs> yeah, Sean, what are these? Uh, that is a uh, Ferrari Enzo and a Jaguar C. You got a warrant, somebody? <laughs> <don't wanna> do that. <laughs> mm. that is a oh. McLaren and a Aston Martin. Um, beautiful cars. The McLaren sent a GTR, which we talked about. I think that's not new news, but the newer news, because the big new tease news. was the, uh, the Aston Martin. Yeah, here, the Aston Martin Vantage GTE. So this is the duo that has come into it. Player two, three, four. Remember that little teaser? Mm-hmm. This is, I guess, players three and four. <laughs> Looks like I've got something to... To test the Ast- says, that Jaguar Aston now on Steam. <laughs> yeah, it does say get it now. Um, that Aston is gorgeous. <laughs> um, so that's cool. More and more R Factor. I tell you, that Jaguar Martin. Jaguar Martin. <laughs> oh, I was doing it on the fly, you know. No. <laughs> Actually, no. You know what? I, 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 I'm going to defend myself. The shape is very similar to the Jaguar F-Type. Um, sure. Sure. This has Aston Martin, but even that's not – these aren't as distinct uh, Aston Martin distinguishing marks as typical. So look at how downplayed the grill is for an Aston Martin. It doesn't even have anything resembling the – you, know. you can make all the excuses that you want. <laughs> it's fine. I I understand. I believe what you're saying. That's what makes you feel better about it. That's that's okay. And this uh, across the entire rear tail markings. I'm not sure that's very Aston Martin either. Um. Anyway, okay. So uh, Sean screwed up though. Sean for a brief moment. <laughs> but I as fast as I was calling it a Jag, I did. Or is that an Aston? I, so it's not like it didn't occur to me that I might be wrong on the spot at the moment in my defense. That makes me feel better. <laughs> you corrected yourself. That's all that matters. All right. So we're going to have to go drive these. Yeah. I'm looking forward to them. Especially, I don't think I'm positive. Well, okay. I'm not positive. I'm fairly certain that both of these, I don't think we've had in any sim, have we? Not Up that Aston thing? for sure. Uh, the Senna is in Forza, isn't it? <laughs> Does that really count? And I don't. it's not a Senna GTR. It's a street variation Senna, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think they're the same thing. Either. I don't think it's the same, exactly the same car. Yeah. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get killed. Oh, I'm gonna get killed for being wrong on whatever I said there too. I know it. Where's my disclaimer? I just whenever I talk about certain distinct features of a car, I probably should put my disclaimer up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else? What else we have, Billy? I I ruined that one. Why don't you go next? <laughs> no such thing. Oh, we've just got a little another teaser from Grid. Here, you ruin this one. Yeah, that that's uh, I can do that I can do that real well. Um, <laughs> the uh, well for those audio listeners, they can't see any of this, but Grid has released another oh video of them doing another street circuit with somewhat questionable race ish cars. Looks like an RX seven. Yeah, it does look like an RX seven or a Jaguar. <laughs> the Jag, the Jag X7. Um, you, you know those brake lights aren't all that RX7. If you really, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if you look at it, it doesn't. It, it looks like a Jaguar from the back end. And I mean, who does it? Especially same thing with the car in front, that Subaru or whatever that is. I, I, I could mistake that for a Jaguar too. Oh my god. 
their uh, new rally version. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, um, I, I just, I don't know. It, this is confusing for me. We're running. I remember the street circuits, and they were fun, but I, I don't know. These are more like tuner cars, I guess. Tuna racers. Oh, drifter. Yeah. Drifter. Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say they look like that. They just, they look like, you know, tuner cars that you're racing through the streets. So I guess it's fine. I don't know. They confuse me ever since they did the, the DPIs on that odd street course. And now I don't know what to think about the title. You know what would be funny about Grid? If somehow Grid came out with the best wheel support of any Code Masters title ever. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking about this, Think about what they've done with Dirt Rally 2.0 and like the the drip. You you know you don't like the drip feed of content that they're doing, right. and I don't think we can necessarily say that they're going to take anything out of this because it's been so long since we've had a Grid. I'm not counting Autosport, but Grid style game. Right. But are they gonna are they gonna do the same thing where they they drip feed these season right uh, uh, releases out? Gosh, just I something to not. keep in mind. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, the misery! No, <laughs> oh, 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 I'm gonna be so angry. Um, and earlier when I was prepping the show, the guys on Twitch were able to kind of see what we were talking about as I got ready for, and uh, everyone pointed out. Uh, Third person camera view confirmed. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, thank you. I don't know. I I uh, I want to like it because I I have nostalgia for the original grid. You know, I enjoyed right. that. I took it for what it was. It was more of a you know casual experience with a little more to it. And this, I, uh, I'm, I will say it every time. I'm still disappointed. I have not seen drifting. Drifting was the best thing in the in grid. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of a drift game rise to the success levels. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say there haven't been drift games, but I'm surprised something with the drifting scene hasn't caught on bigger. Well, I think Forza kind of took that over. I think that's been part of their problem is they, <coughs> they lost their identity. They saw a, like this surge of people using their title as a drift you know, game. Right. Yeah. And I think they moved in that direction. And I've, I've listened to several uh, people on YouTube that have been big Forza advocates saying how you know, ever since about three or four, they've really lost the motorsport aspect and they were getting these silly cars and, you know, they don't really care for the driving experience and that kind of thing. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Forza 8 does. But I, I think they kind of went that direction. The one I did buy, it was on the PS2. It was the D1 series. And a lot of people didn't like it. I actually had fun with that game. Uh, and there was a... If you beat the game, there was like this ending with like a, an alien spaceship that came in. It was really funny. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I, I liked it. It was fun for what it was. I, I had fun. It was D1. I don't think I have it in here. But the D1 Grand Prix series. Okay. Okay. Was, I That was fun. I, uh, this week we were covering Need for Speed. Uh, you have something playing on the background? Um, I hear I hear noises. Was it that noise? I don't know. I hear people talking. Oh, it's people talking over the grid video. Oh, okay. Um, but they can't. I, I it's only through my mic. Everybody's it, it, probably everyone is probably hearing it as loud as you were. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm like, Dad. I <laughs> I am more excited for the new Need for Speed. Because I think it's going to fulfill more of that fun factor that I'm hoping for from a grid title. I just, but who who knows? You know what? 
Prove me wrong, because I want to love them both. I didn't like what I the way I said that. Let me rephrase that. I hope that Grid has a career mode that makes me excuse some of the things that I've seen so far to where all of a sudden I'm like, okay, it's not that big a deal. You know what? Racing an LMP is fine because it leads to this aspect of the game or this aspect of the career. Cool. They might be able to woe me over in a big, big way if they give me decent force feedback and a fun career mode of some sort that keeps me entertained. Um, well, yeah, that's what I want. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. I don't expect it to be a bleeding-edge sim. Right. And therefore, I depend on more career mode. And exactly. in a Gran Turismo way, it doesn't... <laughs> David. <laughs> I'm sub. <laughs> In a Gran Turismo way, it doesn't have to be super over-the-top elaborate either, right? Like, I don't need, uh, uh, you know, the voice of Vin Diesel and a bunch of character acting, necessarily. Uh, it can be as simple as trophies sometimes and rewards. So it's not like, again, it has to be overproduced in order to give me a good career mode. My brother has been getting new games recently, which is very rare. My brother's the kind of guy who would just play the same game forever. And so I use him, like, as one of my judgments of how people play and do certain types of gamers. Um, and so he bought Just Cause 4, and he literally played from start to finish. And I think that game took my brother three or four weeks of seven days a week after work play to get to the end of the career mode. Um, and my brother doesn't do multiplayer. I don't even know if that one has multiplayer. And now he's getting into, like, the Call of Duty and I'm watching him glued to it, sucked into the storyline, sucked into the advancement, and he's playing very happily. And so when I'm talking and railing against career modes, it's like, well, I come from the heart of someone who's been a gamer all of his life, you know, and I do on, I don't need every game to be my competition sim because I'm a sure. gamer who loves right. cars. So like, I will press the oil slick button to wipe out the guy behind me. You know, I will play push the super turbo boost flames out the rear jump button. Um, I'm okay playing that kind of game. I will play a twisted metal. Um, so when I'm critiquing the arcade racers, I always, again, it comes back to more that they haven't defined their genre in this wide open you know, uh, 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 spectrum of uh, racing games that I'd accept, you know, from a, a, a Mario Kart to a, you know, iRacing, you know, R Factor 2, whatever you want to say. Um, and so it's, but it's like when you can't clearly define where you are in that space, it makes it very hard for me to jump on board. So that's my, where my skepticism comes. Uh, yeah, it's a cranky. Uh, Cranky Pants said, uh, we're, oh, I lost it. Oh, here it is. Uh, never played a career mode in any racing sim. Am I missing out on something? I always just play single race events. Uh, there hasn't really been a sim for a long time that has a career mode worth anything. So, uh, we, we are missing out severely. And if you're not a traditional gamer if you're not somebody that likes campaigns in other games i mean i do i play all kinds of video games so the car pg aspect i understand a lot of people don't care for because they just want to get in the car and drive but i always argue that you lose a sense of accomplishment you lose the sense of ownership with a vehicle that you've put time your virtual currency and effort into. Uh, that's why I like the original Grand Turismos and Forces because they're they're they had a sense of ownership. Even though the career mode could have been better, it wasn't. It, it made me want to keep playing it. There's we have so many racing titles right now. What distinguishes one from the other if they all do single race, right? So you get used to one sim and it doesn't make you venture anywhere out of your wheelhouse because, well, why? Uh, I can drive that car over here. The reason would be if there if if you can if you're an offline sometimes person. The reason would be having great AI 
and a reason to complete the career mode. You know, unlock cars, unlock specials. I mean, that's that's kind of part of the drive. If you're not competitively gaming, in my opinion, then that's part of the drive of having something like a really good career mode. So. Yep. Uh, very quickly, hey, Billy, happy belated birthday to you. Wow. And, and happy birthday to Mitchie Hoyer, who uh, streams on this channel all the time. So. <laughs> I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> I, I was I was wishing you a belated happy birthday, and I was wishing wishing uh, Mitchie Hoyer a happy birthday as well. I just got words. Oh, happy birthday, so. birthday to Mitchie! <laughs> and playing a happy birthday song. Um, there you go. All right, all right, moving right along. Sorry about that. Uh, Sim Experience is having their end of summer sale, so it looks like the GS5 is on sale. Not sure. I didn't get a chance to head over there and look through all of the sale items. But if you're a fan of Sim Experience or you've been looking to get some Sim Experience, you might want to head over to their website and uh, just see. I just clicked on that I one's taking us to just the, GS5. On the GS5. GS5, yeah, okay. There you go. And you can watch my review of the GS5 at the Sim Pit as well. All right, what else? What do we got? Oh. No. Oh. 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 Mm. Here we go. So, Autosport. You know the aficionados of sim racing they are they they talk about um i don't think they actually got their hands on it did they just are they just recapping what the dev diary says yes i believe so okay well then i i have nothing for you because they didn't touch it so but it but <laughs> i it, didn't catch that it's it's the claims that you uh that WRC yeah. eight will will be better than WRC seven, but that comes from a developer. We all know how that goes. Um, just looking at one other thing here on. Oh, the G seats had sold out, so this is on a sale on the re. They have well, they had ones. a they the first run sold out, and now they have a second run. I think is what they said. Yep with the sale price for the end of the summer cool um yeah so the, the physics i we'll see we'll see i mean i drove it it was so hard to Cross tell my fingers yeah i want it to be good uh, like me too I want it to be good. when and what i've heard is that it does have a very good career mode backing it so this could be one of the better single player games out there of our time uh if done right so that's where my optimism comes to i really again i'm I'll never let it go. I really do enjoy storyline aspects of games. So, all right, why don't we knock out these esports, take a quick break, and then come back and uh, talk about, oh, I don't even want to say the word. No, I'm going to say the word. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Earmuffs. Heat. Oh, <laughs> where's my ba-boom? Ba-boom! Ba-boom! <laughs> 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 All right, so if you're familiar with, uh, we're on to eSports news now. If you're familiar with iRacing and their uh, eNASCAR Ignite series, this is for the younger folks. What is it, up to 16, 14 to 16, 13 to 16? Uh, it's something like that, isn't it? Yeah, I, I know it's no older than 16. I might It might be 14, though. It might be, yeah. It's, it's something like that. Anyway, it's for the kids. And... <laughs> <laughs> And they switched from the Legends car to the NAS NASCAR Wayland Tour Modifieds. So that's pretty cool. I think this, the Modifieds are great. So This is for the surviving kids in uptight mm -hmm. father uh, land, you know? And, uh... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Survi wow, here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. No, it is for the Not kids. That's monetized. awesome. <laughs> Race room this weekend, they're kicking off their esports seasons in the uh, FIA WTCR Oscaro. The opener is on Sunday, and that's going to be the best of the best, really, in the world of race room. And uh, I love it. All of them. Everybody's kicking. Everybody's going. Like, right now, you, you literally have an esport for just about every single sim up and running right now, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Speaking of. <laughs> uh, yep. We've got the 
Gran Turismo FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships in New York this weekend. So Manufacturer Series is... No, that's next weekend. That's not this weekend. That's on the 24th, and the Nations Cup is the 25th. Oh, so there's still time to fuel up the Sim Pit Jet and go. There, uh, yeah. Get ready. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, no, I don't have my weekends available. i got to work on the Chodas. Oh, yeah, you're going to be doing something else. If you'd like, you can borrow the Sim Pit Jet. Racing, racing a car, blah, blah, blah. I, <laughs> if, it's a big if, we might not make the race. <laughs> I, I might be spending a lot of time, energy, and money. Um, it, get it together. Put it together at the track. I mean, in true really. In true lemons. Actually, there's a lucky dog, but they're all kind of interchangeable names. Nah, nah, nah. Still bolting stuff on when you get there. You'll be good to go. Actually, and that's not super uh, true. They are not all equal. Uh, Lucky Dog is probably the most serious and most hardcore. Like, there's fewer themed cars. Like, there are cars that just show up and they're like, okay, you basically have a race-prepped piece of junk. Um, But it's race-prepped, you know. So, uh, and then Lemons is where you're going to see a little bit more of a, a car that was built to look like a giant chicken, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I, I, would, I would drive either, in all seriousness. I probably <laughs> wouldn't. I wouldn't build one, but I'd drive one. Dave Blair brought it up. I wasn't going to touch it. I was going to say when I was offering the jet, and I was like, well, let's hope it can stay on the runway. And it's oh. only funny because everybody was okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, in case anybody doesn't know, J- Dale Earnhardt and his family were in a jet that it must have been t- landing, right? Because they were in Tennessee. Yeah, That's they where were Bristol. They're it. landing at Bristol, and they went off the end of the runway. And if I am correct, I think I listened to their their episode, the Dale Junior download mm-hmm. on Tuesday, uh-huh. and they had a whole thing where they were talking with their pilots. If I'm remembering correctly it was either this week or last week had a whole deal where they're talking like an ad like they're talking with their pilots and stuff wow i gotta tell you dale jr i don't know if you're listening if i was dale jr and i had a wife and a kid and a wonderful property and i had more money than i probably need to finish the rest of my life and set up my kids even I would probably not want a job where I fly every week on a NASCAR schedule of like 42 weeks of the year flying around that much for them or for money. Like, I'm not saying don't get on a plane. I love planes. But if I'm Dale Earnhardt Jr., I'm only getting on a plane if I'm going to Hawaii, to Aruba, to Mon. You know, I'm not going to Bristol, Tennessee and risking me and my family's life for more money more fame you've had it all i love you dale but man stay safe <laughs> wow nothing like telling what people uh, telling people what to do with their money anyways um <laughs> well and i'm gonna go one more step on this where we'll never get off the air sorry billy um i don't understand like i joke about wanting like a g5 or g6 g7 whatever they're up to gulf stream you know private jet but okay i don't know doesn't it seem like if you're rich, like, hey, you're in a band, don't fly in little jets. Fly commercial. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I Maybe one could argue that a bigger plane, if it had the same problem, may have been more catastrophic. I don't know. I hate flying in general, so. Uh, I love flying. Okay, I okay. I'm sorry. I've ruined the show. Um <laughs> Well, you got this last one. Talk and then, about McLaren. Okay. Redeem yourself. Okay, redeem myself. We're going to finish this up, take a small break, and then we're coming back to talk about heat. Uh, calling all Asia-Pacific gamers. Race the MCL 34-round F1 night race, which happens to be Singapore, to qualify your way or compete your way into the McLaren Shadow Competition. So I don't know exactly what defines the Asia-Pacific. I don't think that includes Hawaii, for example. I think that would be North America. I think you got to double check the rules. I'm definitely not in that region, so I didn't have to look it up. But if you're in that region. I I would think it would cover Hawaii, but maybe not. Maybe not. You never know. But you can uh, follow the link at their Twitter page and be able to join that. So I I encourage anybody who's listening who's in that region, 
go become the next Rudy Van Buren. Wouldn't that be awesome? Actually, it's not quite the next Rudy Van Buren. But McLaren seems to really take care of their people. I mean, McLaren seems to really take care of their people. So uh, I would take a job there. Anyway, that is going to do it for the beginning. We are going to take a very short break, refill the coffee, go to the bathroom. I encourage all you guys to do the same thing. And when we come back, we are going to talk about NASCAR heat. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. We will be right back. If I can find my little uh, uh, intermission. There we go.
Okay. All right, we are back, and we have a special guest. I'm sorry about the longer than expected delay. Look at this. Look oh, you at, can't hardly see him, though. I see him. I see him. You guys see this? So <laughs> we went to go take our break. I mean, he's live. Hi. We went to go take our break, and I hear my dogs going bananas in the backyard. And I'm like, what the hell are they going? And I see my, my female German Shepherd. She's like a year and a half now. And she's like digging in the yard. I'm what the heck is going on? And my male mutt dog, uh -huh. he's like cowering by the door. I walk <laughs> out there and she's just like going nuts. She's digging in the yard. I'm like, oh man, come on. And I walk over there and she runs over to me. She's her tail's going bananas. What did you get? Because that's usually means she found something. Right. But it's usually like a snake. <laughs> and I walk over there, I'm like, Holy shit, is that a turtle? <laughs> never, Ten years here, I've never had, I've never gotten a turtle. I don't know if somebody's pet and they let it go or if it's just, you know, an actual just, you know, obviously wild turtle. But right. I don't know what to do with them. I mean, I got to put them somewhere. I just don't want them to get um, run over or, or eaten. eaten or something. Yeah. Oh, my God. I guess God. I'll just put them in the front yard. I don't that know. That is awesome. Hi, Gamera. Yeah, kind of <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh right. wow Watch out, I'm gonna lick my hands Dan you didn't <laughs> find that hanging out in the bushes yeah right <laughs> Dan probably left it in the bushes for me <laughs> Dan is that your turtle <laughs> I mean, he was obviously like he was obviously under our the patio that we have poured because he's muddy and everything right. and my poor dogs or the poor turtle I can see all the scratches <laughs> my, poor, my poor dog was trying to get after it yeah, does it have a turtle? That would be good. A few people are asking for turtle soup, by the way. Oh, no, no, no soup. I don't I don't kill many. Uh, it's very rare that I even kill an insect, let alone an animal. So <laughs> They said keep it and name it John Hill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. All right, I'm going to go put it in the I'm not sure who that insult is delivered at in that case. If it's, if it's the turtle or John Hill. Um <laughs> Oh, sorry, John Hill. Yeah, he's cool. He's uh, like, I don't want anything to do with you. Okay, Craig, he says, lick your hands. The colors, the colors, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. All right, I'll be right back. I, yeah, maybe that's what happened to my mail dog. Maybe it uh, licked the turtle. <laughs> Name it Momo. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'll be back in just a sec. All right. So as Billy steps away, I'm going to build up and set up. Uh, we'll, we'll try to keep Billy calm by not mentioning this too much until he gets back. So one of the things that we, uh, that Billy sent over to me before today's show was this video here. And this is by 704 Games. This is NASCAR Heat 4 Q&A. So uh, it was posted by Jeff Favignano, Favignano <laughs> on YouTube. So if you search for NASCAR Heat 4 Q&A with 704 Games, it's by Jeff Favignano. And you can uh, hear it for yourself. So it is an hour and six minutes long. I did not get a chance. I listened to a little bit of it this morning, maybe like three minutes. I really should have listened to more. So Billy's going to be the authority on this topic. Um, but it's the typical thing. And, and I'm not going to say too much about it because I think it's kind of funny before Billy gets back. I'll, I'll talk about it. I think it's kind of funny and ironic that we're going to now let uh, Billy talk all about NASCAR Heat 4 and what they said because as most of you know if you're fans of the show you're well aware that that Billy's had an interesting career with uh, NASCAR Heat 3 and we joke around about it being the earmuffs you know the the unmentional game or sim in in Billy's world so we we joke and anytime it's become the butt of many jokes maybe even beyond how good or bad the game was but to the that it's been used here it has been definitely comical so Billy is going to give us his thoughts on what he heard now keep in mind this is the typical developer speak now again i haven't listened to it but i know the scenario i know the rundown i know the way this industry works and the bottom line is you know before the game comes out before anybody's really had an opportunity uh favigno 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 thank you uh fa thank you marco brett Favre. um but 
you know, it, before things are released, they come out with all sorts of statements. And, and you know, you, you expect to hear a bunch of things. Uh, oh, he's a test driver for NASCAR Heat. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, it, it's going to be that typical, oh, it's going to have better this. It's going to be have better this. Oh, we put a lot of attention into that. Um, you know, we expect that. And, and, and we expect to hear that from them before release, of course. And then we all do expect them to also then deliver it. Um, you have a clip for me from yesterday? Oh, Heiko. Heiko. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Devin says Billy and Heat go together like PB and J. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's a match. It's who put my peanut butter in your chocolate. Um, it is, it is, or, you know, it is absolutely... Uh, oh, here he comes. Just out very... So now I'm. Gonna I wash my hands. <laughs> you didn't lick them. <laughs> Dirt all over the place. <laughs> so did you just, what did you do? Oh, so two questions for you, Billy. Before okay. you washed them, did you lick your hands? Oh, I'm by the guy. And um. What did you name him, and where'd you put him? Uh, yeah, we'll go with Turbo. Turbo. And, <laughs> and uh, I, what did I do? I put him in, the, I'm not sure where to put him, because I think they kind of need like water? a water source every once in a while. But there's really, that's the odd thing. There's really no water source anywhere close except the canal. And the canal, you can't get in and out of. Like, it's not a natural stream or anything. Right. So I put him in the bushes in the front yard for now. I don't know what to do with him. It had but, to yeah. have been somebody's pet. It had to have been. Somebody just I, I, it got I, loose yeah, or... Because yeah. I know people of turtles, they, they let you run around, you know. <laughs> well, it did not have a, a collar and a name tag on, so I, there's no way I can, you know, where's the chip in the turtle? Yeah, or do you just... I would just Sharpie on the shell. You know, if found, <laughs> <Yeah>. call. <laughs> right. Um, you know, uh, most of our most of the animals we have in this house are named after race cars or places or parts or something, uh, something car related. So, did you name your cars? Do I name my cars? No. Okay. I don't name my cars. Okay. Okay. So you meant like Delara. But, but the as a potential pet, name. right? No, as a potential, your pet name would so be like one, Delara. So I have a brother and a sister that we did a rescue, and that was, um, they're just mutts. But one's named Penske, the female's name's Penske, and then the the boys, the male is Sanders, which is a, a racing wheel and sprint cars. And then the rabbit that the kids got is named Nit Nitro. Okay. Um... My female German Shepherd is named Paris for Paris Auto Speedway. So the only one we didn't name after uh, an automotive thing, uh, one of the cat's names is Piston, but the other cat couldn't figure out what to call the cat. But he's colored like nacho cheese, so I instinctively <laughs> just call, started calling him Nacho. And so that is oh, the cat's dude, cat's name is Nacho. That's a great name for a cat. <laughs> I love it. That's Nacho Cat? <laughs> that's yeah. my cat. That's Nacho Cat. Um, <laughs> my dog is named Max after Max Verstappen, of course. Uh, I'm a there huge, huge, huge fan. Um, people, Sweet. So, okay, so I did a little build up. Um, okay. And you had sent me a video last night, which I unfortunately didn't watch. Uh, shame on me. Um, <laughs> but I watched a few minutes, and what I heard was in my three minutes. Here's what I heard, and and this is the build up I give it, and then I'm just going to turn it over to you, and I'm going to walk away. Um, I heard the typical, so I'm talking to a developer or listening to a developer before the release of the game. So it's better this, better that, better this. We paid attention to this. We focused on that, but yeah, that's what you said last time also. So what were your impressions and thoughts? And I'm playing the video in the background muted right now. Um, what, what were your so thoughts in listening to it? So if you get a chance and if you're interested in NASCAR Heat 4, definitely check out Jeff's video. I've 
spoken with Jeff a bunch of times. Favignano, good dude. Um, he has been doing work with Heat 4, I think, since the second one. He might have done stuff with the first one with him, but I'm fairly certain since the second <coughs> one. Okay. So he usually gets previews, and, like, next week he gets to go build it. And he is a little more forgiving, I think, because he knows the developers, but he still says when it has a problem. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't think he's as... He's he's nice about it. How how about that? Okay. But he will point out the shortcomings of it. So I think his name is Zane. Joined him for a Q&A. And they start going over about he for that guy just joined in February. I guess he helped launch Anthem. Okay. Uh-huh. And then left there to go work for 704. Because he's been a huge nascar slash racing game enthusiast his whole life he's been in the industry for like 10 years so he gets on board with 704 by kind of this weird happenstance of trying to get into the the pro league on heat three missing the cut somebody says to somebody else hey but you should check this guy out and he ends up getting a job there okay uh so he's been playing the games he plays NASCAR 2003 still from Papyrus. He, he plays all these different ones. So I think that, number one, that's a little more refreshing to hear instead of these guys encased in their own little bubble. Like, he has a bunch of outside experiences that he can draw in. So what I gathered from what he was saying is, uh, initially they talk about the physics. And yes, every time we hear a developer, all the physics are better, they're improved, whatever. So he flat calls it out. He says... The version, the version of physics that they were using before was like the car was on a center pin. Okay. And I just started laughing because when I said I hated Heat 3, it didn't feel natural and it didn't feel right. And my uh, people that disagreed with me are like, oh, it's just a setup thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm all, no setup is going to fix the problem that this game has. Right. You know, I, I went and ran the dirt cars. Dirt cars don't drive anything like what an actual dirt car drives. Like, oh, you just got to change the setup. I'm like, that's not fixing anything, though. And then I went to run the trucks, and the trucks run nowhere even close to what iRacing feels like. Right. And I'm not just talking. You would think if the, if the game was more on the casual side, like the trucks would be stuck to the track. Right. And instead... They do this weird wash thing through the corner. And when a sim does that, it tells me that usually it's the center pin that right. they're operating off because the truck can't hold an arc. Right. You know, it's part of the, the game can't hold an arc because it's not actually getting the physics from all four contact patches of the tire, you yeah. know, each tire and all yeah, this garbage. That center pin turning it into almost like a slot car. So again, it can wiggle on this point. But that center pin is what is actually determining the angle all the way around the corner. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've said that about many a game back in the day, and I haven't uh-huh. had to say that about Original a modern Forza sim. Like that. Original Forza was even yeah. like that. You know, there's so you can definitely feel when a sim, uh, and it's more prevalent, I would say, in older racing games and sims where you get that feeling of the cars on the center pin. And so I called it out, and I just started laughing because. People were telling me, no, I'm wrong. I mean, not everybody. I'm just saying the people that said I was incorrect were citing this reason. And the guy just confirmed what I was thinking is or feeling is that the car was on a center pin. Right. And it basically kind of act like a slot car. But instead, the center pin just moves around the track wherever you move your wheel or your controller, your gamepad. Mm-hmm. So it says they've moved to Unreal Engine, which we can talk about how that could be a whole problem in itself. But they've got they've done away with all those physics and now they're using a more modern sim like he didn't say sim like but that's the best way i can describe it is actually using the contact patches of the tire right and aerodynamics the you know uh tire model all these things to actually determine what the car is doing not this center pin that makes the car just kind of do this around the track yeah so that that's good to hear i mean I don't know how good it's going to be. Yeah, and how much they've really least, relieved it from that feeling, but that yeah, it was something they were they addressing. From, yeah, doing that 
to something that is a more akin to an actual car. The way he described it was, you know, it felt like a center pin. And he said when he got there and he started doing initial builds, uh, he said it, it feels way more like a stock car now than it than it did before. Again, could be developer speak. I don't know. But if you want to take him at his word, it's encouraging nonetheless. Right. Um, then the so they there's a bunch of different improvements but they were talking about how <clears throat> drafting is improved they redid the drafting model which is good because that was a you know a big thing that i noticed right away in heat three the drafting was not was not great mm -hmm. uh they moved to the f mod sound uh instead of what they were using before so now i guess how F mod works, um, or how the the original sound they had in the game worked was it was kind of like this one point, and it really didn't like bounce off of things, and there was no they had to like how do you say it? They had to kind of do these workarounds to get like any sort of echo or or stuff like that. So this time they're using the F mod, and they went and recaptured a bunch of sound. So, you know, what they've showed sounds better. Mm -hmm. Again, don't have her hands on it. Can't say for sure. They also talked about they redid all the dirt stuff, which is good to hear. So basically the esports guys were like, well, what does this mean? He says, take every setup you have and light it on fire. Because awesome. it nothing drives even close to what it what it does in heat three right heat four is completely different so again i mean you're you're telling me the right things at least you're addressing and looking into the right things we have to have optimism yes. right but then it's like can they actually deliver on on that um one of the things i found really aggravating is 90 percent of the footage i saw was like the floating behind the car third person again uh third person view confirmed um <laughs> <laughs> right but um, I do believe they show first person in there. They do, but looking at it in that view made something so about the graphics look like this old school, like the graphics coming at me kind of. I I can't well, quite they, describe. Well, they have a lot of motion blur on that, right? A lot of motion blur. I think the actual, if you look at the sky boxes and some of the lighting that they've got going on, it's definitely apparent that they're using the Unreal Engine. To me, the art style looks much better mm -hmm. than their previous entries because the previous entries had like this haze to it, right? Like this whitish glow to everything. It was an odd filter or like something. Like a washout almost? Yeah. It was very bizarre. They, they, they toned it down. They've been toning it down as the series has gone on. It, it's like the, someone came in and was like you know, one of the final judges came in and was like look you're, it's just too saturated and they're like we're not redoing the color palette you know so here right. add haze <laughs> you know yeah. does, is that better so, so to me it looks better is you know i think that's more of a personal thing if you like their art the art style that they're displaying or not i'm not going to say that's right or wrong i think it looks better mm -hmm. i think it's a step in the right direction from what it looks like as far as what the cars look like on the track I always find that that's difficult to judge because as we know, what you're visually seeing is not always what is being physically represented. Right. Because right. as you know, uh, a lot of developers, that's a box. Yeah. You know, the physics is, is a box or split into boxes and you can't see that the tire, you know, touching the track. You can't actually see that you're seeing a physical, you're seeing a physical artist's representation of what the car is doing. It not, it could look like a Mack truck. <laughs> yes. It, it, it's hard. It's hard to judge. Um, but a lot of people were still criticizing the way the cars were going around the track. That's why he made a specific point to say the physics are entirely different. And they have to be because they're not even using the same engine. Now, right. whether they're going to be better or not is a completely different story. They're showing but, off a little of the career mode, it looks like, too. 
so they revamped the career mode. Um, not something I got it. I got into Heat 2. I thought it was actually one of the best career modes you could possibly play nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, Heat 3, they had some changes that people didn't exactly like. So they're kind of like rolling a few of those changes back and adding some more. So basically, you don't have to start at a lower tier level now. If you have no desire to start down there, you can just, in essence, buy an Xfinity car and start there and race on, like he was saying, race on the hardest difficulty possible. You can buy different cars for different tracks. Your team will have so much time to develop for each track, each type of car, and now you'll be able to pull them off mm -hmm. if they're not going to, you know, if they get, if you're going to go to Daytona and they're working on a car and the next week they're going to go to a different, like a short track, and your short track now is cars really far behind your super speedway car, you can pull them off that car and get them to go work on another another car instead of riding out all the way to the super speedway race and then having to swap and not being able to work on your short track car for a longer period of time. Okay. So, I mean, that sounds kind of cool. I like the ideas. They've completely redid the A. Oh, not completely. I don't know what that means, but they 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 redid the AI. Uh, it's gonna make pit stops are gonna make more sense with the AI now. Uh, they're going to instead of just being nose to tail in a draft, they're they're gonna calculate and when they think they can move or they see you move, they're gonna move with you. So. I don't know. It sounds like they're going in the right direction, which is what I was my main criticism with Heat 3 is that Heat 2 I thought was pretty good. Not amazing, but Heat 2 I thought was okay for what it was. Right. I had fun with it. Heat 3 I felt actually went backwards in terms of how the cars drove. Um, so if they can <clears throat> rectify that with Heat 4... Uh, we, you could have a fairly decent experience for the console and the PC um, moving forward. Right. So, I don't know. What, what is, I'll ask you, what do, what do they need to do in order for you to say, I like Heat 4? You know, the main thing for me, like I, it's funny as you were saying all this, I almost was going to bring up and, and, and it's like, well, when you have what's evolving right now on the NASCAR side of gaming, um, you have, uh, uh, you know, let's just say you have iRacing and how complete its NASCAR is. Like iRacing can deliver a, you know, 85, 90% authentic NASCAR season. Um, at this level, and they have an eSport representing it as well. And then because you have NASCAR Heat, and I, I think where I'm rubbed wrong by NASCAR Heat is the fact that it's even made for the PC because it's, like, so blatantly held back by being a console title. And okay. it's like, but that's okay because, like, the Ignite series, let's just call it for kids, but I don't mean kids. I mean, let's call it for next level tier drivers so if you can give me force feedback that represents a feeling of being there it's going to go a whole long way no matter what else follows it um and 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 i even will invite you to fool me with just something built around the force feedback before you even got to how real the physics were or weren't because on that level i'm not asking it to be in iRacing where I need to be an engineer to tune the car to be able to win. I'm okay with there just being a slow, medium, fast, or easy, difficult, you know, uh, alien setup. And and I'm totally fine doing that. Um, so I, I think if you can give me really good force feedback. And the other thing is when you are stepping down from trying to be the iRacing, to me it leaves you a lot of room to crunch other numbers, which means – even though iRacing has improved it, better damage model, um, career mode, um, cut scenes, trophy scenes. Um, so it's like... Sure, yeah, it, that makes sense. You know, you give me all that extra stuff instead of giving me all that number crunching. Give me good force feedback. And I'm like, you know what? This is really good because I want that sim that still gets people from being a NASCAR viewer 
to a NASCAR player to a, oh my God, they're sim racing reality, you know, uh, and, and, and I, I always like that. And so that's what I wanted Heat to really supply. And in, to, in some ways, I think it has, because I think most of the people who loved it just didn't know, you know, the other side um, of how deep sim racing gets and how sophisticated sim racing sure. gets. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that they, they can do that. Um, I just, you know, I, I wonder, it's like, well, I'm going to play it on the PC, probably, and probably it be... did make mention of the PC. So... So he specifically cites that he is a PC player. So right. that was one of the things that he brought in was like, hey, we really need to focus on wheel support, better wheel support, better better everything for the PC players. He said because he said he recognized that the PC players he felt were being uh, not left behind, but not really thought of either. Right. And so he started talking about force feedback. He started talking about wheel setups. And he said, so we, we need to do a better. So one of the things I brought was we needed to do a better job supporting our PC audience. And he mm -hmm. said, and we've made that shift. He says, we've made a bigger shift to supporting the PC audience because we want them to be engaged as well. Right. So again, you're saying he's saying the right things, whether it comes to fruition or not, we'll have to see, but. Uh, uh, you know what it else? It may be lip service, but it, it I would I hate saying that it's just PR speak because I would like to believe that these are human beings that want to make a good game. Right. And so I would like to believe what they're telling me. And this particular person hasn't given me any reason not to trust. Sure, them. and and it's coming from a reliable the source to an extent, a a favorable sure. but reliable um, so two two things that I'll say. Number well, one thing, and then I have a question for you. The first thing is, I love, and I'll just put it this way: I love the boogity 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 aspect of that title. And by that, and I don't know who the voice of. I know Jeff Gordon's going to be on the cover, but getting some of that what you hear and see on Sunday aspect built into the game. So again, when newcomers to our automotive motorsport world come in, that that's what they because it's still going to keep them pumped up. And it's going to make it more fun. And then they're going to dig deeper and then maybe someday become, you know, uh, the next Bono, Hui, you know, or Enzo Benito. Mm -hmm. um, so my question to you also is where's your level of uh, enthusiasm on a, on a, on a scale? <laughs> After, and, you know, I, I like, Je like, again, Jeff's a really good dude. Like, he's a super nice guy. Um, so I like... I liked the questions Jeff was asking because he wasn't throwing softballs all the time. He was saying like, Hey, one of the big complaints was the AI, you know, what did you guys, did you guys fix AI? Did you, what did you do to improve? Uh, one of the, one of the things they also brought up was the paint thing. Jeff's like, I'm not a painter. He mm -hmm. said, but again, that was a criticism from the community about the paint. And the guy flat out said, it's not where we want it to be, right. but we did make more improvements to it. He said, okay. but it's still not where we want it to be. So there were things that he said that gave me this feeling like, okay, I'm a little more excited isn't the word, but I am definitely, my my intrigue is a little higher mm -hmm. than it was before. Because in all seriousness, I was really not looking forward to even trying NASCAR Heat 4. I was just going to do it just to do it, just to see. But with the way that they were talking, like, okay, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit more intrigued to try it, and I'm a little more hopeful that the title is at least better. Right. You know, if they can make a step in the right direction, and it's it's got to be a significant one. Let's not say it's an incremental step because I think they had. For me, the driving is the most important. Right. What do the cars drive like? And now if I'm going to drive against AI, okay, what does the AI drive like? I mean, graphics for me are kind of somewhere like in the middle. Obviously, I don't want it to look like a PS1 game, but, you know, I'm, again, I'm okay with the way Automobilista and GTR2 look. Like, it's not the most amazing thing, but the driving experience for me has always been my biggest thing. That That is like, if we're going to do a, a rating uh, review score, the 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 physics, the way the car drives is right. going to be the bulk of where my score lands. Absolutely, and, so, fair, and certainly that's very very fair. 
Uh, so for me, if the cars drive better than heat two, they're, oh, they're also talking about tire fall off now. The tire fall off is supposed to model. I mean, they've got all the new models for the cars. They had to redo all of them because the horsepower and the, the aero packages are different. Right. Uh, he says, so that with that, they also changed the way the tires gained heat. They now fall off. You can burn off the right front. You can actually set up your car differently so that if you want to try to get a long run car versus a short run car, you can actually set up your car that way and it will make a difference. Awesome. Awesome. So, so again, I, I, if that's good, then everything else, while I may criticize a little bit, is going to be very small potatoes. Because the biggest criticism I had of Heat 3 was I hated the way everything drove. <laughs> right. So hopefully, I, you know, again, I don't want any title to fail. I never do. I just want you to deliver on what you're telling me that you're, go you're putting in front of me, whether it's a more casual racing game or a, or a hardcore sim whatever you're telling me and whatever features you're telling me that are going to be in there then that's that's what i'm going to judge it on right well you know what in listening to you what gives me some confidence here is is one thing uh you know when when a seasoned pr person can either give you a positive answer to everything or has a spin on what they couldn't make positive instead of just owning up to whatever hurdles they're facing or whatever like if it's just all just perfect right i'm like whatever but when you tell me that they're like hey you know what like the paint you know what we're not where we want to be you know and he took one on the chin for the game right and it's like when you do that it also makes me a lot more strong a believer of what you're exactly. saying in the positive when he direction full-on admitted that that you know hey those physics in in the first three titles no yeah <laughs> they, they weren't they weren't what they were supposed to be yeah and there were a few other things that he mentioned. He's, he was like, hey, we're working on this. We're not where we want to be with it yet, but we are working on it. So there was a few things that he was like that on. What if somebody so, builds a game one day, totally different turn here. And I don't know if it's even possible, but I don't know if anyone's ever. What if you built a game where you're like, I'm going to work backwards from what I want the end result to be. So instead of trying to make a bunch of numbers and then pretty them up with car models and things and get it to where we're fudging the numbers to then recreate certain numbers, what if you just were the opposite? You're like, look, I don't care what I have to do, but this car needs to finish a lap time in 148 and it needs to be running out of tires at lap 35 and it needs to run out of gas at lap 40, you know, um, and then built force feedback as a canned effect tool right um like oversteer understeer um you know and so on and and so anyway i don't know if it's even possible to do such a thing but i just think if you're building an arcade game that's kind of what you're doing you're building you know so could you do that and then back it down to the point where it felt realistic you know because to me well, to I an would extent argue initially that's how sims were right i think initially that's and i think that's why some sims were really good and some were really bad but i think as we've gone on i think it's gone to the opposite extreme right to the point of being detrimental you can tell me all this technical data about how you have the most advanced tire model ever but if you can't implement that tire model into a reasonable feel in in the sim like that means nothing to me right I, I don't care. I don't care. And I kind of feel the I'm same not, way. Like, to an extent, it's become this engineering thing. Like, they're taking all this, like, MoTeC data from a car and building these things to recreate all the exact same kind of numbers and then trying to massage all that together to create this cohesive sim-feeling thing and then wrapping it in a car model. Um, and, and it's like, yeah, but I don't know. We're working from the other way, you know, here as the end user. I'm working for my monitors and my steering wheel and my pedals, you know. Um, so all, like you said, all of that, it's cool to know. But, like, if the perfect sim didn't have perfect raw physics numbers, I don't think I'd care. If the setup yeah, parameters the worked problem, like though. they're supposed to, you know. Right, and we have set ourselves up for something that is... 
I don't know how attainable it is because we make mention how at a certain point sim racing and real world racing diverge. Mm -hmm. So as much as we're trying to emulate the cars, we are missing certain things. Yes. We're missing the seat of the pants feel. We're missing G force. We're missing a lot of these things. Um, even our view and perspective, mm -hmm. right? VR has made it much easier now to have a better view and perspective, but you're still not totally getting the correct one. No. Um, but it's way better, I would argue, than a monitor or triple screens. So we've had to, like, as we've played throughout the years, we've had to trick and train our brains how to interpret the data. How, you know, it's the same thing I say with RC car racing. You could tell me all the numbers that you want. It's big car racing. You can tell me all the numbers. All I do is go out there as a driver. I tell you if it feel good, if it feels good, or if it doesn't feel good. You know, right? And it was one of the one of the things that I learned from Lee. One well, probably uh, the guy that helped me out the most in terms of setting up the sprint car was he says, "You don't think anything about anything except driving the shit out of the car." Right. That's it. I take care of everything else. You just focus on driving. And kind of that's always kind of stuck with me. So I apply the same kind of thought process here is that if it's making a realistic lap time, right? We're not we're not uh, five seconds faster and all this kind of garbage. If we're making a realistic lap time, the car, when I drive, it makes sense to me. You could tell me that you use cardboard to figure out how to get the, the data for the tires. I don't care. Right. Why is that relevant to the experience that I have? But you will see people that get irate because they are not using the proper numbers, that they are not using the uh, Endure Racers. Uh, whichever way you think their mod goes for R Factor 2. I actually enjoy some of their cars. Some of the other cars I don't. But there were guys digging through the data and going, well, you didn't use the right numbers for here. Right. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that I really care as long as it's, in my eyes, simulation is the thought that I am racing and getting the feeling of what that car would be like in real life. Right. So while I want you to be accurate I, as, as possible, if that accuracy starts getting in the way of having an enjoyable driving experience, which I, I believe there are some that have gone that direction. I think Gran Turismo even did it, you know, right. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't care. I don't care about the numbers. <laughs> I just want the damn thing to go around the track and have, I want to have a good time driving the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Again, I'm not talking about making the car go five seconds faster or be 10 seconds slower. You know, again, if it makes a reasonable lap time, then I'm I'm on board. Yep. Yep. I'm totally with you. Totally with you there. Um. All right. Well, great conversation. Hey, front front seat. Thank you very much. I, oh uh, yes, thank you. Saw thank and you heard that much. come in while we were away. Um. So we have a little bit of unattended business to take care of before we can call today's show to an end. Oh. Last week we had Derek Spear on the show. Two things. Number one. This is the last day I have to wear this oh, shirt. Yes. Actually, to be truthful, everyone, yesterday, if you notice, it's not a moo, moo anymore. Yesterday on the calendar was the last day I had to wear this shirt. Uh, but I had said that I'd wear it on this episode, which actually makes five of these, the first one. So that makes over a month if you do your math. Or Anyway, I washed the shirt. So now it actually fits again. Um, but uh, today's the last day on the shirt. But last week's show... We had Derek Spear, and he was doing a giveaway. So I was going to do it off air, but I figured, you know, I'm all about... Ooh, dun-dun-dun. I'm all about proving that I have no shenanigans going on in the background. So real quick, let me bring up the small... If you didn't watch, now it's too late to do it, but last week's show, here's Derek Spear showing off the track boss that he's giving away to anyone who commented on last week's show. So uh, there's a picture of the track boss there at the Derek Spear Design website. You can check that out. So if you didn't win, but you're like, man, I really needed that button box, you go to DerekSpearDesign.com, designs.com, 
and you'll see a variety of he makes so many cool different um button boxes like here's the race king by the way which i'm a big fan of the race king um good looking anyway uh you can check those out so now what i'm gonna do is i've gone to youtube random comment picker i put in the link for that very video and now we're gonna have it retrieve the comments and we are now going to randomly pick a winner. And that winner is... Better write it down, huh? Uh-oh. Fragger. Fragger. I'm not... Uh, and, uh, Fragger gets in with the sniping. Because I, uh, I don't think I've seen many comments by Fragger. So a nice sniping job for the win by Fragger. I will contact him and uh, put you together with Derek Spears so that you can win the uh get your box so uh congratulations to him and then beyond that billy any big plans coming up this week before i see you again um i'm gonna go back in the studio hey there's Hopefully fragger hey fragger you won <laughs> <laughs> you're right here live nice awesome you're not such a sniper after all <laughs> there he is just lurking <laughs> um the uh let's see i'm gonna go back in the studio try to finish up our other two songs so we can release those and yeah that's really that's it. the only exciting thing i have planned all right i this weekend oh tonight 5 30 practice six o'clock race on i racing pro four trucks at wild horse motorsport park password will be simpit 2019 everybody is welcome to join us uh, should be fun. We can hold up to 60 drivers. So please fill it up. Please, please be the 61st person. If you're the 61st person and you couldn't get in, I will send you a Simpit sticker. And Ooh. as a, as an, uh, I'm sorry. I would love to send out some stickers to people <laughs> because we overbooked our room. So come out tonight, uh, 5:30 practice, six o'clock race, Pro Four Trucks at Wild Horse Motorsport Park on I Racing Simpit Truck Racing. Uh, Sean Cole, the host. That's number one. Number two. All weekend I'm gone, so there will be no streaming for me this weekend. Actually, that might not be 100% true. Um, Ooh, secret stuff. So tomorrow I'm going down to work with the Lotus Gang, the Chotus Gang. And it's all hand. I think five of us are working on the car tomorrow. And then afterward, all five of us are going to Base 51, which is the CXC Simulations Sim Center. Mm. I thought you guys were going to try I thought you were going to raid something there for a second. We're going to raid base 51. Um <laughs> <laughs> and and I think you know this Chotus mod that I have if I'm not, I think Chris Contadine of CXC has a little bit of pull at base 51. I'm just I I I'm a, a hunch. Oh, done it. I think we're going to get to race the Chotus. I don't know if that's what we're going to do. They told me bring some other clothes cuz we're going to go to base 51 after. And I was like, wait, if we're all going as the Chotus team, please tell me we're driving the Chotus. Wouldn't that be cool? One of us will be in the John Player uh, special version paint job. There you go. One of us will be in the Gold Leaf because it's gone through three different Lotus paint schemes. Right oh. now being the Llama or the Camel era. And okay. I understand at the end of the season it's going back to black and gold for the uh, John Player special version. Anyway, so nice. that's that. And then I'm going to do more streams, more reviews. Uh, we have a video coming out today on that Radical Dream Ride. Uh, i got to get a couple permissions on that one. So right now the patron crew can see it uh, unlisted. I can't make it live until I get it checked by a couple of people um, to see if I haven't overstepped my legal rights. <laughs> oh. uh, anyway, um, and then... I'll be driving the Chotus, and the next week I really, really do want to make that Assetto Corsa race and Sim Racing Systems on Thursday night. So I'm going to do a little work, excuse me, to get my Sim all up and running perfectly for that as well. That's really about it. So, yeah. I mean, Sounds if, good to if, me. if that wasn't too much. <laughs> nah. No, it's never too much. Never I... too much. Well, anything else on your mind? No, I, I, think, I think we're good. That was... Uh... It was good. Yeah. Good show. I'm glad to see there's optimism for Heat Four. I, I do want it to be great. Cross our um, fingers. I I I'd like to see it fulfill the expectations it's setting for itself. How about that? Yeah. Well and and again, and I hope the same for grid, and I hope the same for need for speed, by the way. Uh, I can't yeah, wait to play need for speed fast and furious. We're gonna have what? We're gonna have WRC eight. Mm-hmm. 
we are going to have uh, the NASCAR Heat 4. We are going to have, um, what is it? October is going to have Grid. Yep, yep. December is going to have Automobilista 2. And then if you want to throw in uh, Need for Speed Heat, I don't know when that comes out. Is that September? I don't even know. I can't remember, but I'm look. I, I'm oh. looking forward to that one. Honestly, I in a in a guilty pleasure, like a sure. Need for yeah. Speed meets Fast and Furious meets Grand Theft Auto. It said it has a dark side to the storyline. All I want is it for to be. All I want from it is to be fun. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. So. All right. Anyway, uh, well, happy Friday, everybody. Get out there. Do some sim racing. You know, I'm always telling you to do that. Don't be lazy. Get out there. Do some racing. Great time of year. Lots going on in the sim racing world. Just about every sim got their e got, got their esports going on. So uh, get out there. Get involved. Have some fun. Do some racing. But that's going to do it for this one. I'm Sean Cole. That's Billy Strange. And that's another edition of Beyond the Sim in the books. Have a great weekend. See you guys. Thank you.